Hi, this is Jenny Baldwin, the Elementary Math Instructional Coach, and today I'm going to talk about the Math Plus Purple Unit 4, which covers whole number multiplication. And this unit is important because it applies what you learned in Unit 3 about whole number multiplication since and applies it to real world story problems. And that's why we multiply in the first place, because we're going to use it in the real world. The one thing that I do want to share with you though is that this unit does begin to multiply with some multi-digit numbers that are larger than the standards require. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about strategies to use base 10 blocks and manipulatives so that you can successfully complete this unit. The most important thing is that we understand what multiplication means. Whether we know all of the facts yet or whether we model them with base 10, we need to understand what multiplication means. And you know, third graders right now are beginning to practice those facts, and we do hope that every one of them are fluent within their facts of between one and 10 by the end of the year. Fluency is not just about speed, it's also about how they make sense of the numbers. So um, modeling is what is key and critical in helping students understand what multiplication is. You will notice that there are checkpoints at the end of some units and some units or lessons do not have a checkpoint and we'll talk about some of these checkpoints and how to help your child be successful with those and we'll also review the extended problem solving. So let's head on over to the student activity book and remember you can go straight to unit 4 and it will open up to the whole number set or the whole number multiplication unit and as you can see, as I mentioned, this unit talks about models in the real world. So we have Farmer Jane has three rows of tomato plants. There are eight tomato plants in each row. How many tomato plants does Father Farmer Jane have? We do not want students to count one by one. We are wanting students to be able to skip count and understand that counting one by one can take a very long time. But when we have multiplication, um, we can use repeated addition and skip counting and then eventually remembering all of our facts. Then we have three rows with eight in each row, so we have three times eight. This type of modeling will continue and then you will begin to see numbers that are larger. And this is what I was referring to. Students are not supposed to memorize 24 times 4, but they do or they can learn to model that. Um, this is a little bit of an enrichment type activity, but when you break it down with base 10, it completely makes sense. And it's just like using repeated addition. So when we have Simone works for four weeks mowing lawns, each week she earns $24. How much has Simone earned? We have 24 plus 24 plus 24 plus 24 four times. And so we can then count up our tens. We have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And then we can start grouping our ones, whether we have eight, then nine tens, so that would be 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. And you can see here, they regrouped and you could have your students circle, you know, 10 to make another group of 10. So the most important thing is that they understand that multiplication means multiple groups. It means that we have four groups with 24 in each group and modeling it is perfectly acceptable. Now as we continue to go through the unit you're going to see um, uh, some additional word problems where they want you to make groups with certain amounts in each group and then you will see that it says use base 10 because these are the models that are larger. So I'm going to turn on my webcam and let's work out Andre has four packs of seeds. Each pack has 22 seeds. How many seeds does Andre have? So when I turn on my webcam, I'm going to show my digi box. We have 22 in each pack and there's four. So in this little digi block that the teachers are going to be using in the Class Connects, we have 10. So these are a different way to show base 10 but there are tons of manipulatives and printable base 10 blocks. So we have 10, 20, and I'm going to have four groups of 20. And then it says that I need um, actually 22 in each of my groups, so I'm going to put two more 
So I have 22 in each group. Now, when I count by tens, I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. So the answer would be 88. We didn't expect students to follow a standard procedure. We expected students to model that. Now, since you may not have these digi blocks, and you may not have um, base 10 blocks, I will definitely show you a way to have those on your computer and use um, manipulatives that are virtual. And I'm going to also show you how you can teach your child to use, um, sometimes they call this sticker notation or base 10 notation. So if we have 22, we could draw it like that, a group of 10, two groups of 10. And I'm going to get a little bit closer so you can see. We have 22 four times. And so we can teach students to draw the stick for tens and the dots for ones. And we can say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. So they can see that this is four times 22. Whoop, 22. We have four groups of 22. So now let's head back. Um, so even though these problems are complicated and have big numbers, they're very doable when we use models to get to the answer. So as we continue through the unit, we will continue to see models. You're going to continue to see story problems. You're going to continue to see arrays. And this is going to really help your child understand when they get to the units on area and perimeter, what it really means that we have um, four times seven or four square units. Um, or four times seven square units. So um, again, encouraging students not to count one by one, but to begin really reasoning with the math. And, and also, as um, I mentioned last time, I'm going to show my webcam again. If we have something like four times seven, one of the best things that you can do for your child is to teach them how to break up facts that they don't know into facts that they do know. So I'm going to draw four times seven, and we definitely want students to pick up those pencils. We want them to use scratch paper when they take the end of the year assessment. We want students to use their math journals as they do their work and as they listen to Class Connects. Well, maybe I need to think about, I don't know what four times seven is. S sevens are hard for me, but I do know that seven, if I broke that apart, Seven is the same as five plus two. So I'm going to take five, and I'm going to do four times five, which is 20. And then I'm going to do four times two, which is eight. And I can easily see 20 plus eight is 28. So this is how we can teach students to decompose and break apart numbers so that even when it's a fact that they don't know, they can turn it into something that they do know. This is the key component to multiplication. It's understanding the math. It's not being the fastest, it's being the wisest. So when you approach problems like this, continue to have students count and regroup, and then let, and, um, especially encourage them to draw pictures to go with their word problems. Some of the word problems are not going to have um, the pictures drawn for them. So we want students to model that. We want them to draw that. Um, on the end of the year assessment, it could have them draw something or make a sketch or understand a drawing and show what multiplication sentence would match that drawing. So all of this is very doable even if your child has not memorized their facts. It's all about the understanding. And again, they're going to continue to use base 10 blocks and models to work out problems with larger numbers. Now this one um, is something that does go into more fourth grade skills. And so what I would encourage you to do when you get to some of these that say multiplying multi-digit numbers, I really do not encourage third graders to begin using the standard algorithm like this because what happens, it says here we're using the algorithm, what happens is students forget about place value and they start saying, okay, let's multiply six times four. 
Well, this four is not a four. That four is a 40. And so we need to encourage that terminology. We have six times four tens or 40. So that is 24 tens. And that's kind of abstract for students. Um, and that's why I do not encourage this type of modeling. I would rather see your student use drawings and base 10 models than to begin using the standard algorithm. The standard algorithm is not required until fifth grade because what we want to avoid is students just following rules and procedures and getting an answer. We want students to understand the base 10 and how it really affects multiplication. So please feel free to stray from this standard step-by-step -step approach and encourage students when they see problems like this to use models instead. And also, again, your, your child will not see problems like any of these right here on the end of the year assessment. This is an enrichment activity. So um, it's definitely perfectly fine to review this and talk about it, but I would not do the standard algorithm. I would use models instead. And pick and choose, um, like I said before, our curriculum is a buffet of learning opportunities. This happens to be a dessert on the buffet. Um, it is not going to hurt your child to go over it, but don't feel like you need to go over every single one of these problems either. Um, this is one of those things that lists, you know, you could work on a few and not do some of the ones that even go into larger numbers. Problems like this very first one that is a group of 10 are more likely what your child could see, but all of these others are more of the dessert to the OLS. Um, and it's great that we have those opportunities to expand our knowledge beyond just the basics. Again, you will not, your child will not see things like this. And um, I would encourage you not to force something like this their way if they are not quite ready. Um, when working through problems, definitely use the models and modify numbers and make them smaller so that they do make sense um, if this is um, extremely advanced for them. And again, we'll go through some of the checkpoint things and some of these when it comes to multi-digit numbers, it is perfectly acceptable for you to sit there with your child and help them on these enrichment type activities. Um, we aren't expecting them to be able to master this. Um, Right here for multiply equal groups, this is, um, we've kind of gone down to multiply equal groups A. The key to knowing whether something is appropriate or not is kind of the size of the numbers. This one, it has four apples and there are three people. So it's four groups with three in each group um, or three groups with four apples for each person. So that one would be perfectly acceptable. This one is a group of 10, so that you know, is manageable. Six times 54, that's more of an enrichment op, um, activity. So definitely um, feel free to work with your child and, and help keep their spirits high by knowing that this is um, something that is super advanced. And sometimes kids um, feel really, really smart for being able to conquer something with such large numbers. We just don't want them to be defeated because of that. So again, as we go through, you're going to continue to see more of this algorithm. And um, again, this is something, some of these things that you can skip through and not um, do with your student, especially if there is not a checkpoint activity at the end of that assessment. Again, here's, it's all of this comes with this multiply equal groups. So use these number sizes as your judge of what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. Because as I mentioned before, students need to be fluent in their facts through one through 10, but they also need to be able to multiply by uh, multiples of 10. Um, but again, that can be done through models. So um, again, let's continue to go through and see what we find. Um, if your child is still working on their make multiplication facts, definitely use those optional days and some of the time um, that you're choose picking and choosing activities that are appropriate. Um, this one seems much more appropriate except there are some larger numbers, but they're easy to model because we have 14, which is easy to use with our sticker um, models for base 10. Um, 
When we get to the extended reasoning, I will also show you some examples of what is appropriate and what's not and what you can help your child with more and what they need to be a little bit more independent on. Here is a story problem example and it says, you know, as we've mentioned, there's different ways to model multiplication. You can use the area model, you can use an array, you can use equal groups, you can use equal measures, which would be kind of like skip counting on a number line. So the main goal for math, and especially multiplication, is there is not one way to get that final answer. And so students need to find the way that makes sense to them or use different ways depending on the size of the digits. And so encouraging them to use different models and build arrays is the most important thing. Now here it says core focus, solve multiplication story problems. Again, um, these problems are a little bit more advanced. If this was 60 times 6, that is something that you um, child may see, but again, just work, help them break those numbers apart, or when you're working on the lessons, you know, take away the 65 and turn it into a 60 and see if um, they're able to model it that way. And then on the assessment, if something like this comes up, again, use your judgment as a learning coach to be able to guide them through that. Um, we are now, um, have reached the end of that unit, so I'm going to go back to the OLS and I'm going to open up the extended problem solving and I'm going to show you a little bit about what is critical for kids to understand in this unit. Right here, the very first problem starts off kind of with that standard algorithm. And as I mentioned, this is not how we want kids to focus. We don't want kids to think of math as a list of rules and procedures. What I would do is use models on a piece of paper. This is one of the activities that students will be sending to you for grading. So this is where you as a learning coach can also modify this and do what is appropriate. So it says fill in the boxes with different factors to make each multiplication problem too, true. Now this would be perfectly fine to work through with your child, but definitely if you put the three here, you know, ask your student, well if the three's right here, what's the value of that three? And they should be able to say, well the three would be a 30 if it's here, or a three would be a three here. And so as you place the numbers and talk about things, see if it does make sense to them, but talk about place value the entire time. Now as you continue to go through, um, here is an example of a word problem. And it says, Nellie has three, white, three pieces of white rope. Each piece is 16 feet long. So you could use those sticker figures and have 16 times three, or um, three groups of 16. She also has four pieces of yellow rope. Each piece is 11 feet long. So then you could have four groups with 11 in each group. Willie has four pieces of white rope. Each piece is 13 feet long. He also has five pieces of yellow rope. Each piece is 13. So you could draw models for Nellie and Willie. And it says, use words and numbers to show which person made the longest line. Now, we're not expecting students to say 16 times 3 with the standard algorithm. We're expecting students to draw this with a base 10 model. And then they can count by 10s and 1s. Now, this is what I was talking about is a third grade standard. And it revolves around multiples of 10. And what we want students to realize that if we have 4 times 10, we have 10. 20, 30, 40. But what if we have two groups of 10? We have 4 times 10 plus 10, because 20 is the same as um, 10 plus 10. So we have it um, 4 times 10 and then um, 4 groups of 10 again. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Now, what a trick that students learned, which is not really what we want to focus on is students can say, well, I know, or they can decompose this number um, 30 into 10 and 3. So I'm going to turn on my webcam and just show you what I'm talking about. If you have 5 times 30, we don't want students just to learn a trick, but we do want students to think about that decomposing, that this is a 3 times a 10, 5 times we could write it like this, 5 times 3 times 10. So we could do the first part first. 5 times 3 is 15. 
and when we make something 10 times bigger, we have 15 groups of 10. 15 groups of 10 is written like 150. We don't want to just teach kids, okay, multiply the 5 times is 3, then add a 0. We really want kids to understand that we've made 15 10 times bigger. We have 15 groups of 10. 15 groups of 10. So when you work through this unit, make sure you're using that right terminology. Even though a trick is easy to want to um, teach, we have um, 6 times 40. We could do 6 times 4 times 10, so we would have 24 groups of 10, or 240. And again, this is one of the things that your child may see, and I love this one right here where they actually get to draw it themselves. Um, down here, there's word problems to go with that. And here, I would definitely, like I said, this is not a fact that your student must memorize, so definitely have them draw out those story problems and use those sticker notation for base 10 to complete this activity. Now when we go back to the OLS, um, the unit checkpoint may have questions that are from any of these units. Again, if it focuses on multi-digit numbers that are not multiples of 10, feel free to help your child and encourage them to draw it on a sheet of paper. When you get to things, um, let's look at this checkpoint for instance right here, or actually it's going to give me an error message. If you get to a checkpoint that asks you to follow the standard algorithm, that is where you can step in as a learning coach and do something very different and encourage them to model it. Um, and feel free to work with your student through that type of problems. I'm going to turn on my document camera again just to show you what is important, like we've talked about today, is thinking about number bonds and how numbers are created. And these are the factors, this is the product. What two things or what two groups can be multiplied together to make 12? Um, I think having just a bag of Fruit Loops or cereal handy as a manipulatives is a great thing to do. So you could say, okay, I have 12 in all, and then I have, if there's four in each group, how many groups do I have? I have three groups of four. Or what if I know my factors are three and six, what is my final product? So we have um, three groups with six in each group equals 18. So this is a great thing to draw and add into your math journals and to practice. And the Greg Tang math site that I will also include in this um, Coach's Corner newsletter has great number bond activities in there so that your child can practice decomposing and composing numbers. As we continue to go through, definitely don't forget about the math website. There is the Fact Fluency page that has lots of different um, videos and strategies. As you scroll down and pass addition and subtraction, you'll get to multiplication and division. There are ways that you can pr practice one set of facts at a time, and there's tons of cool activities to get involved in as you go through. This is the Greg Tang Math site that I was talking about that helps, that has games and stories to deal with a lot of the number bonds and just basic understanding of multiplication. When you go to the third grade specific page, Again, you're going to have more access to basic videos and understanding arrays and the area model. You will have opportunities to explore what it means um, to multiply by multiples of 10. It also shows you some ways to decompose and use those properties of multiplication because the thing that's important is it's not, it doesn't matter the order um, of the numbers when you multiply. Um, and so you can decompose and break things apart so that they make sense. Definitely don't forget about LearnZillion. You can create a free account. And once you create a free account, go to the Common Core Navigator tab and definitely log in as a parent to create that account. Go to the third grade tab. And then multiplication is the biggest standard of all in third grade. So under this operations and algebraic thinking, you're going to see tons of videos about that. And here, um, and 3 MBT A3 is where you're going to have multiply one digit numbers by multiples of 10. So there are two series of video lessons right here so that you can multi um, click on those to have a better understanding of what it means to multiply by multiples of 10 using various models such as number lines and base 10. And so this is a great 
great resource before your student um, heads into fourth grade and really needs to apply that to a deeper knowledge. And then most exciting um, news is that we do have access to Triumph Online. And so I'm going to log in as a generic student really quickly just to show you what you can access as a student and learning coach. You will type in the student's ID number and then GCA and then go to this bookshelf feature. When you're at the bookshelf feature, click on math and then third grade and then browse the selected grades. From here, you're going to have access to all of these different books. One of my favorite books, this is new this year, is this Common Core Performance Coach. I also like the um, Common Core Support Coach. So if you go to Common Core Performance Coach, you can see introducing multiplication, solving multiplication problems, multiplication properties, multiplication and division step, um, facts, and tons and tons of other activities. So if I go right here to introducing multiplication, I can then scroll through all nine pages. You can see there's nine pages and there's tons of examples and practice activities that show the vocabulary, there's the factors and the products. And as we scroll through, you'll also begin to see some examples um, that are more open-ended that let you talk the math with your student. And this is the type of activities that your child could possibly see on the Georgia Milestones. I've never seen the Georgia Milestones, so I'm not sure. But there could be activities where students are um, can match and draw lines to things. This could be an example of an open-ended response. So we have 3 plus 7. And what's the difference between 3 plus 7 and 3 times 7? So the students can draw lines. Um, they also may be asked to draw an area model. So right here we're given a grid, but we need seven rows with three in each row. So students could color that in, so you could print this off and color it, or you could have your child um, work this out in their journal. This is something that we definitely want them to practice. It says mark all that apply. Sometimes there's more than one right answer. And we talked about how we can use repeated addition or switch the order of the factors. So it says switch number sentences tell how many counters are in the race. So right here, we have six with three. Well, you could say three times six is 18. You could say six times three is 18. Or you could say six plus six plus six is 18. So there's three true answers. So we definitely want students to practice that there are often multiple ways. This is kind of fun as well and especially as we get um, transition to test in the future being computerized for the Georgia Milestones. It could be that they click on something so we have five rows with eight in each row so we would have five with eight equals 40 and we can encourage students to circle those answers and that will help them transition. Um, to that test. Another type of possible questions are true false and it says read each statement about the area model select true or false and so right here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine with one two three four five six seven in each row so we would determine which of these models is correct and we would say true or false and again um, several of them may be true and several of them may be false and again here's models which are excellent and there's a variety of different models and here is an example of an open-ended question it says look at the number sentence 7 times 5 equals 35 describe a situation for the multiplication sentence and maybe um, you could encourage your child to think of a word problem such as seven friends came to my house and I gave each of my friends five cookies. How many cookies did they eat in all? Seven times five is 35. We ate 35 cookies or something like that. So we definitely want students to understand what multiplication is all about. So definitely check out these resources. Here's yes, no, again, just like true, false. And here's more um, opportunities for children to draw and explain their thinking and draw and write a multiplication sentence to represent what they did. So definitely take advantage of this wonderful resource that we have. It is also available for ELA. There are other books, like I said, my most um, 
or my favorite of the year happens to be this performance coach because it is more aligned to the types of problems that your student may see on the end of the year assessment. Thank you so much for listening and taking the time to be an awesome learning coach and use models to teach multiplication with your child. See you next time.